So you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Pittsburgh, PA? In this video, we're gonna talk all about transportation in Pittsburgh and the pros and cons of the various modes of transportation. I'll take you all around the city and show you all the different ways that us Pittsburghers get around. And if you stick around to the end, I'll share with you my top tips for getting around in Pittsburgh so you know exactly what's happening here in Pittsburgh. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything about living in Pittsburgh, then subscribe below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market here in Pittsburgh. I'm Krista Lorenzo and I get calls and emails every day from people just like you looking for help on making a move in Pittsburgh and I absolutely love it. Whether you're moving in one week or one year, give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email so I can help you make a smooth move in Pittsburgh. Today we're here at the Duquesne Incline with amazing views of downtown and the North Shore. Pittsburgh is a city that seamlessly blends history and innovation. While it offers various modes of transportation to meet diverse needs, each comes with its own set of advantages and challenges. So let's delve into the pros and cons of getting around in Pittsburgh. Public transportation. The Port Authority oversees Pittsburgh's public transportation network, including buses, light rail, and inclines. Buses. So the pros of buses are they're economical, there's an extensive network, and they're eco-friendly. The cons are it can be slow during peak hours, some areas are poorly served, and the potential for delay. The T, our light rail system. The pros are it's efficient, punctual, and avoids traffic. The cons. Limited routes because it mainly serves the South Hills and the downtown area. The incline, a historic mode of transportation. My grandma used to take the incline to school. Pros, scenic views. One of the most unique aspects of taking the incline is the stunning panoramic views of the city that it offers. This is what makes it such a great tourist attraction. It's a historical experience. Riding the incline is a way to experience a piece of Pittsburgh's history as these have been in operation since the late 19th century. It avoids traffic. Because it's situated on a hillside, it avoids the road traffic down the steep slopes. Accessibility. The inclines are wheelchair accessible, making them a convenient option for people with mobility issues. Affordability. It's a relatively inexpensive way to move between the higher and lower parts of the city, especially compared to driving and parking. So what about those cons? <laughs> very limited coverage. The two inclines only serve a very specific area of the city, limiting their utility as a comprehensive mode of transportation. Tourist crowds. Being a popular tourist attraction, the inclines can get crowded, especially during peak seasons or hours. The schedule. While generally reliable, the inclines have a set hour of operation that may not align with everyone's needs, particularly late at night or early in the morning. Speed. While they are efficient for what they're designed to do, inclines are not the quickest form of transportation for covering long distances. Weather sensitivity. Severe weather conditions may result in temporary closures affecting reliability. Our inclines offer a unique historical and scenic method of transit. While they are not a one-size-fits-all solution, they remain an iconic and functional part of our transportation landscape. So outside of public transportation, we have a lot of other options. Biking. The pros are it's eco-friendly, we're increasingly seeing more bike-friendly lanes and trails, and it's great for a short commute. But it's limited in bad weather, and we have a very challenging hilly terrain. So we also have to consider safety concerns in busy streets. Bike share. It's a public bike rental program where you can pay to use a bike for a short time or a short distance. So it's convenient, cost effective for short rides and promotes a healthy lifestyle. But it's very limited to certain areas and the availability can be inconsistent. Ride sharing and taxis are another option like Uber and Lyft. They're convenient, they're often faster than public transportation and there are various pricing options but it can be more expensive, especially during peak times, and they require use of a smartphone to use the app. We also have yellow cabs and a few other private companies. The pros are there's no need for an app, it's professional drivers, and it's regulated fares. 
The cons are it's less convenient to hail and it may be more expensive than a ride share. When I was a couple years old, I spent a lot of time with my Uncle Jack. I was my parents' first child, my grandparents' first grandchild, and my uncle's first niece. So when I was two, my uncle taught me how to hail a taxi, something I've never used in my life. <laughs> okay, our other option is personal vehicles, your own car. Obviously, it's convenient. You have your own personal space and flexibility and routes. The cons are the high cost of ownership, parking, and traffic congestion. You know all those rumors about our tunnels. So we're a city of bridges, and those bridges cover a lot of water. So what about water transportation? The waterways in Pittsburgh are primarily served by the Gateway Clipper fleet and a few other private services. It's generally not considered a primary means of daily commuting for most residents. However, they do offer some advantages and some drawbacks. It's a very scenic experience. One of the most appealing aspects of waterway transportation is the beautiful scenic route it provides, offering a unique view of Pittsburgh's skyline. It also avoids traffic. Unlike roadways, waterways are generally free of congestion, providing a potentially faster route during peak traffic hours. On special occasions like sporting events, the Gateway Clipper fleet offers shuttle services from Station Square to the stadiums, making it a great convenient option for attendees and a way to park away from the traffic. For tourists, the waterway transportation offers a dual purpose, a mode of transit and a sightseeing opportunity. It's often very relaxing and compared to the hustle and bustle of road and public transportations, it can just be more enjoyable. But it does have its drawbacks. It has a very limited schedule. The waterway services typically operate on a very limited schedule and may not align with typical work hours and it could be very seasonal in nature limited coverage. The routes generally only connect a few select points so the network isn't comprehensive. The cost. The cost for a single trip is generally higher than other forms of public transportation making it a little less economical for daily commuting. And weather. Operations can be affected by extreme weather conditions such as high winds or frozen rivers in the winter. It's just not practical for daily use. Given the limited schedules and coverage it's just not a good daily commuting solution. And last but not least, good old fashioned walking and running. The pros are zero cost, healthy, and no worries about parking or fuel. The cost or the environment. The cons, it's not practical for too long of distances, safety concerns at night or on busy roads, and it can be really weather dependent. We don't always have the best weather for outdoor activity. I personally prefer winter running to summer running because I'm always so hot, so you'll often find me in a tank top year round. So whether you opt for the extensive public transit system, the growing network of bike lanes, the convenience of ride sharing, or the luxury of a personal vehicle, Pittsburgh offers something for everyone. Understanding the pros and cons of each can help you make an informed decision for all your commuting needs in Pittsburgh. So have fun, explore the city, and allow time to plan your route and allow extra time for traffic during those peak commuting times like sports and concerts. So let's go check it out. And like I said, whether you're moving in one week or one year, give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email so I can help you make a smooth move in Pittsburgh. Until next time, I hope to show you around town. Let's go.